let me lay down some dispersive beats. So y of 1 plus 2 is 2a cosine, and it must be, again, the k average x minus the omega average t times the cosine of delta k over 2x minus delta omega over 2 t. And again, if we plot that, it is a beat pattern. And it's in terms of cosine, so it's big here. And it's small, and then it gets big again, etc. So let's think about our velocities in this case. First, there's the high frequency part, right? So the phase velocity of the high frequency part is what? It's omega average over k average where that velocity is the average, you're averaging omega 1 and omega 2. And actually, in this case, it is not equal to v1 and is not equal to v2. Because just like we talked about before, how here this ratio is not the same as that ratio, if you go with the average halfway in between, that ratio doesn't match either one either, either one, because the line is curved. So in this case, we have three phase velocities. We have the phase velocity of one oscillation, the phase velocity of the other, and this fast phase part of the beat pattern doesn't actually match either one of them. It's the average that comes out between them. Um, the interesting one here is then the group velocity. And that, again, is delta omega over delta k. So the envelope function. And in this case, it's not the same as any of these. It's not the same as v1. It's not the same as v2. It's not even the same as the phase. Let's see. What it would be is delta omega. It would be whatever you get here over whatever you get here. Okay. So actually, if you imagine, if we look closer and closer and just started to define it, you'd realize that this is actually the slope. If you take the limit of a small area, it becomes d. No. Um, d omega dk. It's actually the slope of the curve. There's really two ways you can get a velocity off of these graphs, right? It can be between two different points, and you can just take this height over that height, that over that height, or you can take the slope of the curve. And when it was a line, they were all the same. But now that we have a curve, at any point, you could define two different velocities. You could define the slope of the line, or you could define the points that make up the line. The points that make up the line are the phase velocity. The slope is the group velocity. So the group velocity can be a different phase, and group describes how fast the beat pattern moves, and phase describes how fast the oscillations that make up the beat pattern move. So that's a little bit hard to visualize. Fortunately, I have a plot of one here. So here in MATLAB is a beat pattern I've made where I forced it to be dispersive based on the omegas and the k's I put in. So here you can see it's sine 2.2 minus 2.02t. So you divide that, that, that's a little bit more than 1. And the other one is sine 2x minus 2t, so that one has a velocity of 1. So we have two sinusoids going at slightly different speeds. And when they add them together, they make a beat pattern, and you'll see the phase velocity is very fast, right? Everything's, the high frequency oscillations are flying to the right. But the beat is barely moving, right? The beat is really slow. And that's because the difference up there, 2 and 2.2 and 2.02 and 2, are pretty small. So that's what it looks like when the group velocity doesn't equal the phase velocity. And again, the group velocity is called that because that's how big the thing that the groups of waves make. They make, a, in this case, a beat pattern that moves. If you get into a more complicated situation like a Fourier series, you have many different uh, sinusoids and harmonics making up that pulse, and they might move at different frequencies. It's hard to define the group velocity of that whole thing because if it's a dispersive medium, they're all at different points, right? So if you're, here's your dispersive medium, and you use this frequency, this frequency, this frequency, and this frequency to define um, uh, so, some pulse. And they all are at different, they have different slopes. You can't define a single group velocity for this pulse because they're all at different points on the curve, and the slope is different. And that makes sense. The pulse falls apart. It doesn't move with a single group velocity. It falls apart, OK? So, this, with dispersion, is really where you start to understand dispersion curves. And really, everything you want to know about how any pulse or any disturbance will behave in a medium can
can be described with a dispersion curve. Really, the shape of this curve tells you everything about the medium within the limit that we're working with a linear system, right? So dispersion, anything that's dispersive, it, the wave equation is a linear. Okay, nonlinearity is a different thing, but we're just going to worry about linear systems and think about dispersion.